Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and as you can see, I've got a sleepy eye, I've got an infection in my eye, so um, I'm not going to look wide awake today. But I want to talk about this action that's been taken out against the Home Office for Racial Discrimination, or Discrimination Period, and it's to do with the rental scheme. And I'm going to read out a little bit, and then I'm going to make out my comments. The Home Office has launched a legal battle to defend a policy that the High Court ruled to be unlawful and racially discriminatory. The right to rent scheme, which requires private landlords to check the immigration status of potential tenants and forms a key branch of the government's so-called hostile environment policy, was found to cause racial discrimination and violate human rights human rights law in ruling in March last year. And the reason why it was racially discriminatory was because what the Home Office was telling the landlord indirectly, if you have somebody who turns up at your home looking for a room, who is a person of colour, who has an accent, make sure you ask to see their passport. And what was happening is and that only happened to people of colour or people who had an accent. And what was happening is, is that these landlords were then becoming border guards. And once they had the passport, not they weren't just looking to see if the person was the, the same person who was up looking for a room. They were looking to see if they were legally entitled to be in the country. And the reason why it's discriminatory is because they weren't doing it to everyone. They were only doing it to people of colour. If somebody who applied and had a strange name, um, they would do it to them. They'd say, oh, bring your passport when you come to look at the room as ID. Not your driving licence, your passport. Now, technically, you should have your references. You should have your, you know, a driving licence three utility bills from different companies and that should be sufficient to say okay you and of course proof that you have a job so you have a letter from your employer and that should be enough for you to get a room but what they were saying now is though that is not enough people who want a room have to bring their passports and that is why it's discriminatory Mr Justice Martin Spencer concluded at the time that the policy was causing landlords to discriminate against potential tenants on ground of nationality and ethnicity and was having little or no effect on controlling immigration because it doesn't control immigration, knowing whether or not, OK, a few people who they've got their passports and they find out that they are um, illegally in the country that's not really going to curb masses of immigration. So, and, uh, and uh, the majority of them are legally in the country anyway, but it's the whole point of asking certain individuals for this um, kind of ID and not asking others. Um, the Home Office, which had argued that the scheme was not discriminatory and that it was intended to discourage illegal residents in the UK, is now challenging his ruling at the Court of Appeal in a three-day hearing that began on Wednesday. That's last Wednesday. The government's lawyers will argue that any discrimination caused by the scheme can be justified and that it should not be held responsible for discrimination by landlords. But landlords are being forced to be border guards and fulfil certain requirements on, on behalf of the government. So the Home Office is forcing landlords to discriminate. So what the um, Home Office is saying, we're not responsible if landlords discriminate. But they're the ones that are telling them to discriminate. They're the ones that are telling them that they have to ask potential tenants for their passport. So they're forcing them. And then they're trying to say in this lawsuit that they're not responsible for the discriminatory or racist attitudes of landlords. All landlords want to know is that they're going to get their rent at the end of the week or at the end of the month. That's all they're interested in, that you're reliable, 
tenants and that you keep the place in a certain order. The Independent reported last year that the department had spent more than 78000 in public money on legal costs to appeal against the ruling up until March 2019 alone. In his strongly worded decision a year ago, Mr Justice Spencer found the scheme violated the European Convention of Human Rights and that it abused and that it caused landlords to discriminate against people without a British passport where they otherwise would not. So not only did they have to bring their passport, but it had to be a British passport. And if it, they didn't have a British passport, that was another reason for them not to um, get a tenancy and also to report them to the Home Office. So somebody's got a European passport, somebody's got a Spanish passport, somebody's got an African passport because they don't want to give up their um, original nationality. The, this was being used to discriminate against them. He also ruled that extending the scheme to Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland without further evaluation would be irrational and a breach of equality laws. The right to rent scheme, which was initially trialled in the West Midlands before being rolled out across England, prevents non-EEA nationals from taking up a tenancy if they, have not have, if they don't have leave to remain in the UK and the Home Office has not granted them permission to rent. So the Home Office is having to grant people permission to rent for, for people to rent in the UK. For you to rent property in the UK, the Home Office has to give you permission. How ridiculous is that? And the Home Office has the same principle with all these um, agents. And so what agents are doing now in order to say, OK, I'll give you a little bligh, they're asking for larger deposits. They're asking for more rent. So these poor people are held captive. And that's not how it is. It's giving them and, you know, it's making them exploitable. Tenants who don't have a British passport, they're being exploited or tenants who don't have um, an in-date passport. The Home Office appeal will be opposed by the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants. Chai Patel, Legal Policy Director of JCWI, that's the joint, what I just said. What did I just say? I just said it really good. Oh, the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants, JCWI. So Chai Patel, Legal Policy Director of JCWI, said in a statement ahead of the hearing, everyone has a right to look for a home for themselves and their children without falling victim to racist immigration rules. It must be scrapped so that everyone has a fair shot at finding a flat, whatever their colour of the skin or their passport. What qualifies as a good tenant? Are they, if they're illegally here, should they be um, allowed a tenancy if they can afford it? Um, if they can afford the rent, should they be discriminated against? Um, is the ability to pay rent, do they have the ability to pay rent? Um, can they be a trustworthy tenant? And should that be the criteria? Supposing they can get excellent references and have proof of income if they're self-employed. To me, those are the reasons why somebody rents a room. If I'm going to rent a room to somebody, I just need to know that they're in employment, that they, um, that they have references, checkable references, that, um, yeah, I think that's mostly, yeah, that they can pay rent. I mean, really and truly, all landlords want to know is that their tenants can pay rent, that they're not going to trash their home and be a pain in the butt. That's all landlords really want to know. So, I don't know, what can you say? These people are trying to get, give, like it's a hostile environment policy. It's called hostile environment policy for a reason. And that's to make it difficult for anyone who is not 
who does not have a British passport. That's basically it. That's basically it. Okay then, that's all for now. Bye-bye.